Hi, in this tutorial we're going to take the basic contact form that we created in a previous tutorial if you watched it and we're going to add a database save to it, create a table, add the DB save so that there is a backup copy of any form submissions just in case emails go astray. So we're in the Chronoforms Forms Manager here, here's our basic contact form and we're going to create a table. Check the box there, click Create Table, and here's the Chronoforms Table Creator. It suggests a table name for you, we'll come back to that in a minute, and it shows you down here a few automatic columns that it's, the Chronoforms has added to the table, or suggesting that are added below here, all the names it's been able to find in the form. And for each of those it's suggested a type of Verchar255, and we'll come back to that in a moment. First the name. There are two problems here. One is this is a bit long, so I tend to take all this prefix that Chronoform suggests, take it out, and simply put CF in there. The second one is that dash in there may be a problem in SQL, so I'm going to replace that with an underscore. It doesn't have to be the same as the table, but we do need to be able to recognize it. Now coming down here, the ID, the table must have a numeric auto-incremented auto primary key. If it's called ID, then you can have problems in some cases when article IDs get confused with record IDs for the form. So I change this to CFID. Coming down here, all of these will leave. That's just a unique string. This is the user ID if they're logged in or zero if they're not. The date it was created a field for a modified date if it's changed later, and then here are the fields from our form. They're all set by default as Verchar 255s. That's a bit long, and while it will cause you no problem with a small form, with a big form you can exceed the maximum size that MySQL allows. So what we're going to do is make these down to something more reasonable. I think 64 is okay for a name, 64 is okay for an email, you could make that 128. Subject will make up to 128. Message is more difficult. With 255, that will catch most short messages, but if the message is longer than 255, it will be cut off at 255. So what we really want to do here is to remove that, change this to a type text, and that will allow however long the message is, it will be saved okay. We don't want to save the submit button. There's just no point. So that's it. Just do a final check. That all looks OK. Click Save. Now, there won't be anything to see if we check data here yet. So we'll go into another extension I have here, which is Mijo SQL. It's a kind of PHP My Admin for Joomla forms. I've got it open in another tab. We'll go here. If we refresh the page to update the table list, then we'll find down here CF Basic Contact. There are no records in there, but we can look at the uh, show fields down here. And you can see all of that is what we just set up in the table, so everything is OK there. Back in here, we're going to open up the form again in the Forms Manager. Takes a moment or two. Go to the Setup tab. We want to add a DB Save action in here. They're in the Data Management group. We just drag in a DB Save action. We'll use the drag icon here to move it up so that it's saved, now let's say before the email is sent. Click the edit button, uh, there's a label in case you have more than one DB save, it's enabled, we're going to set the table name here, CF Basic Contact, there it is. We don't want to save under model ID, we don't want to multi-save, we don't want to update conditions, so everything else can stay as a default, we'll do save, We'll save the form. Click Test Form. 
we'll put some suitable entries in here. Add some random text in here. Submit the form. Looks exactly the same. But if we now go back into here, into Mijo SQL, CF Basic Contact, yeah. select CF Basic Contact so that's updated, run the query. There's the record we just saved. And if you need to, you can see it here and edit it. We don't want to do that, we'll just close it. So there you have DB Save attached to the form. If we go back to the Forms Manager here, close that. You can now click the table which has appeared here because we've added a DB Save or, or a DB Read Action, and that shows you one record. And again, there's all the data from it. You can't edit from here, but it's all there working. So that's it. Thank you. You have a DB saved attached to your form.